I hope you can hear my voice over the sound of this diesel. Uh, but here's the last thing that I have found that's wrong with it. You can see it right there dripping. I always... I did notice that this truck didn't smell like gas. Uh, when it'd be parked or it'd be driving on the road, it kind of had a, a faint smell of diesel. I didn't know what it was. See it there. Quite a bit. You can see it falling underneath. The fan blows it all around. Makes it hard to troubleshoot. At first I thought it was just water. Put my arm underneath it, smell my arm. Sure as shit is diesel. So Okay hey guys, here's what comes in the uh, blue spring kit that you get off of Rock Auto. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of just show you what comes in the bag here. There's a little infamous blue spring that ups your fuel pressure up to around 60 PSI. Um, this is the brand that it comes in. I think it's just an SMP. I think it's pre-sold from a bunch of different manufacturers. There's your part number, R81001. They call it a repair kit. I uh, picked mine up on Rock Auto. You can see it there, 4079 uh, plus 299 for shipping. Uh, there it is, 2004 F350 Super Duty 60 turbocharged fuel injection pressure regulator. Um, yeah, so 4378. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of an illustration on how I go about, or how I'm going to go about installing these uh, parts. Uh, obviously this is my first time and uh, I'm a diesel fuel pressure regulator virgin but I noticed um, there's a really good video already on YouTube and if anyone's watching my video I also want to direct you over to uh, Diesel Tech Ron I was just watching his illustration on how he does this and this guy's the man so nice little plug for Diesel Tech Ron jump over to his uh, to his channel looks like he's got around 10,000 subscribers um, this guy is what gave me the confidence to do it myself, but of course, since I have my own channel, I figured why not put my spin on it. I do have some footage of, um, of the truck running, which you probably have already seen because I haven't edited the video yet, but it's actually showing you the leak um, and what's going on and how I was able to find it and what you can look for for your truck. So without further ado, I'm gonna get these parts organized into a nice little bowl, get myself set up under the hood and start getting to work. Okay, let's take you up in this bay. Uh, my installation is a little bit different than yours. Uh, I have this k and FIPK kit, which basically is just a, it's a glorified cold air intake. Um, it sits, mounts right there to the turbo. You can see it there, comes down underneath this air filter shield shroud thing. There's the air filter that I just pulled off, wasn't even clamped on. Um, this doesn't look like it has to come out. Ron pulled his out, but mine, obviously, this this pipe's gonna have to come out. Comes down to the, I think that's part of the turbo. Sorry if I'm not completely familiar with these engines yet, but yeah, that pipe has to come out. Looks like that clamp right there loosens. This one up here loosens, that comes out. Probably gonna have to pull this box out to get that pipe out, which is not a big deal. I'll go ahead and work on that now. And then we'll, uh, our goal is to get to this area right here to start servicing. So I don't want to be fighting with these tubes and hoses when I'm working with O-rings and springs. So uh, let me get to this. Okay, we got the uh, air filter and the air shroud uh, removed. That was as simple as a uh, 11 millimeter bolt here. And then I just went on ahead and undid the 11 millimeter nut right there. Came right off, that frees up uh, the access to this FIPK. Uh, intake tube um, that looks like it's going to give me enough clearance there that I'm looking for 
Next uh, step in the process is to pull this, I don't know what I'm gonna call this thing. This is obviously some sort of turbo pipe. Um, I just hate sounding ignorant on my videos, so please save your comments. Um, we're gonna pull this, I'm gonna undo this clamp here, and I'm in the process of undoing this clamp down here. That's gonna free up this tube. Only thing I'm thinking is this bracket's probably still gonna have to come off because obviously that's gonna obstruct this pipe from coming off here. So let me go ahead and calculate how I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you how I did it. Okay, this was pretty simple. I just loosened up this bolt here and that bolt down there. This slides back just like that. Up here, this slides this way so you can kinda see how it'll snake around this. And it just simply lifts out like that. Easy breezy, no big deal. So now, gives me perfect access to this regulator. So, looks like another trick is to relieve pressure to the system on the cap here by loosening this up and then getting a pry bar to pull this radiator hose down so I can have clear access to this regulator. Let me go ahead and do that now and show you how I did it. Okay, what I did was simply put my pry bar right underneath that line, going in very gently, and I gently pressed down and set my pry bar underneath that battery cable right there, just like uh, I've seen previously done. And what that basically does is it holds this radiator hose down and it prevents you having to drain the entire system of coolant. Just make sure you relieve your pressure in your cap first and make sure you're really gentle when you press it down. You don't want to go cracking hoses. So now, what basically that does is gives us a free area to easily access this regulator uh, mechanism and install the, the blue spring kit. So the next step is to uh, basically loosen this fuel line right here. So you want to always put a wrench here first. Put your wrench here and don't just go smacking it to try to release it. Go easy because there's a lot of horror stories of guys uh, twisting this line right here and you don't want to do that. So let's get on to that. Okay, I've got a 13 16 wrench here. Go ahead and just install it on this one here. And what I'm basically going to do, get a rag, kind of put it in here so I can monitor and catch anything that leaks. And what I'm basically going to do is test this first. So what I like to do is I just try to apply, I'm going to apply constant pressure equal. I'm going to watch that fuel line to make sure it doesn't try to bend. And I'm just going to slowly increase pressure as I watch that line. Bingo. It just broke loose. So now I got lucky. Do that first and then you always want to put another backup wrench on this side uh, if you do start to see any kind of torsioning happen but you should be okay. So this should just loosen like this. Let's see how much fuel pours out of this thing. That's good. Let me go get a zip tie so that doesn't fall. One second. Okay, I just put a zip tie right here so this nut can't fall any farther back down and then I gotta chase it. Thanks Ron for that tip. Let's go ahead and pull this oil dipstick out of here. This is gonna get in the way. Not too much fuel at all, not any fuel, that's good. Cool. Now, what I can start looking at here, a few things, that O-ring will get replaced. Make sure it doesn't just fall off, looks all right. And I'm just basically looking at this, just studying it. Um, gonna go ahead and start backing out those Allen heads now uh, to start getting that plate off of there. So let's go to that step. Okay, what I'm doing now is just backing out these uh, Torx heads using a T25 on them. And I'm going real gentle, just like that, just so they kind of pop. And then I'm loosening them out. And I'll continue to do this. And then, because uh, I don't have a cameraman or a tripod, it's a little hard. So let me pull these out and then I'll go to the next step. Okay, so I just backed out the last of these Torx bolts and I'm holding pressure on this with my thumb 
uh, because it is spring loaded. You can see it wants to, as I let go, it's going to want to pop. I got the camera fixed so you can kind of see a little bit more in detail of how this works. So what I'm going to do, I'm just supporting my finger underneath here and I'm just going to slowly let go of the pressure and lift off straight. There it goes. I feel the spring pressure has loosened enough. I'm just going to pull this off straight. There we go. And now we can expect or inspect what's been going on here. And on initial inspection, you can see, look at how, wow, that's really flat. Look at how flat that gasket is. I mean, that's not sealing anything. You can see the the poor design here in that it's allowed the gasket to crush too far into its reservoir um, and cause that gasket to not really do anything. It's kind of just hiding in there. So obviously fuel's going to leak out of there pretty bad. Um, I'm wondering if the same, if the depth of that canyon where that gasket sits in uh, has been modified on the new part. Maybe that's why they sent you a new cover because perhaps the, the depth at which that gasket resides in there maybe is a little shallower to uh, prevent this from happening again or maybe they've thickened the gasket but you can see right there there's no sealing that's going to happen there at all. Um, so let's go ahead and just start moving stuff out of the way here. Here's our, um, our famous plunger which is right here and this is just a little wiggly spring this is what the blue spring replaces and this acts like a plunger and then here's your air valve up here so what I need to do first is to get some rags kinda in here because this is gonna wanna spill fuel and in order for me not to get sprayed in the face I'm just gonna kinda shield my face here and pull this plunger out slowly Try to get it to where you guys can see. Oh good, no fuel spray, awesome. And let's inspect this. That's pretty, pretty bad O-ring shot on the end of it here. It uh, doesn't appear to be brass, but it appears to be a plastic material. Um, and then this is what the spring sits in and my spring is pretty gummed up and gross so well, there's 200,000 miles for you right there that's original set that aside take a look a little deeper in here let's inspect this little collar kind of sits in here let me grab my pliers And this truck being lifted doesn't make it easy. I'm actually standing on the tire to work. I'm just gonna put my pliers in here. Dirty. Pull this out. I'm just kind of putting backwards pressure on it. There we go. And that doesn't appear to be damaged in any way or broken. It just comes out in one piece. It's just a piece of plastic acts like a collar put that aside and then up here you got this little air valve if you will I don't really know the correct terminology for it but I know it provides air pressure let's go ahead and I'm just gonna gently if I can finagle this out need like a, some sort of a pick hold on let me get a pick here just a second something to pry with. You need to pull back on it. I need to get a pick. Okay. I'm going to use an Allen key and see if this works. Try to pull up on it here. There it goes. It's starting to move. There we go. That just comes out. And this one is broken. Yep. You can see it. It's just left in there. So we got to pull this fuel filter out of here. You can tell it's broken because there's just just flat. It's supposed to have a little nipple on it. So let's go ahead and uh, grab a socket, pop this this little uh, doohickey off of there. Pull that fuel filter. Hold on one second. Let me grab a tool. Okay, got a uh, 15 16 wrench up here. Let's go ahead and just give it a little break that bad boy loose. 
try not to bump into the camera here. And learning all sorts of stuff on these six O's. We're so scared of them. Not too bad. I look at it as, hey, this thing's got 200,000 miles on it. It's gonna have shit that breaks. That's why the new ones are expensive, right? Pull that out there. That's basically your new fuel filter. This is your fuel filter housing. And I'm just looking at that O-ring on there. Looks pretty good. No complaints there. Let's pull this fuel filter out. Just kind of pops out there. A little gas in there. Gas. Diesel in there. That kind of drip. Put this over here. Okay, now, since this is broken, we gotta fish it out this way toward the camera and not let any of those pieces fall back into the engine. So, let's get something to poke and prod with. Preferably my little Allen wrench will do. If I can find it. start to press that that way bingo there's a little broken piece obviously that's why they give it to you in the kit right put that there nice plastic part designed to completely be destroyed by combustible fluids okay uh, we got it torn down pretty well I'm gonna wipe all this out Kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, make sure there's no shit in here. Clean it up good. And then we can start putting it back together here. So I'm going to just kind of clean this for a little bit. And then I'll pop it back on here. Okay, one last piece of the puzzle here before I forget. I just noticed and forgot. There's still an O-ring in here. I got a pick out of here. So I actually got a proper pick. And I got a plastic one so I don't mar anything up in here. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that right now. It's definitely uh, gummed up and sticking. Not wanting to really come out of there. Yeah, these uh, this old rubber. It's just been destroyed by the diesel fuel. There we go. Just popped out. I always like to inspect everything that comes out of these engines, any engine, to see why it fails. And sure enough, you can see it there at my black glove. Oh shit, I just lost it. <laughs> it was hard. Um, <laughs> the rubber was really hard, just like that gasket and the existing part. So, okay, let's start putting this together. Okay. What I'm doing next is I'm going to use the new plate here and basically the only thing I didn't show you is you just got to you got to back this piece out of your existing one it goes into the side here I didn't want to move the camera because I have it on the uh, <laughs> on the radiator hose here just put it in a vise 22 millimeter socket back it off take the old o-ring off and that's how I am here at this new step I just put the new o-ring on here and this is basically just going to thread in here nice and smooth and then I'll put this uh, on the vise and just give it a nice tighten down. Uh, you never want to use thread sealer on anything when you're using O-rings. So no thread sealer here. Just go ahead and get that hand tight. Give it a nice little with the wrench. Don't over tighten it because remember this is just a um, piece of aluminum. So you can break this and brass isn't very strong either. So you just want to create a nice tight seal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll get back over here under the engine. Okay, so we're back under the hood here. Sorry to keep saying okay and I'll see you in a minute and all that stuff, but it's kind of weird um, <laughs> doing this. 
But let me show you where I'm at here. Just installed this little gasket here. And all this is is just a formed molded piece of um, like a cylindrical gasket. And you can see how that has a nice rise over the over the actual plate there. See how it sticks up? So that just installs there. I tighten this down to a nice snug but not over tight uh, torque. And then I installed the new O-ring here, which is for the fuel pressure right here. So it's just that new O-ring just slipped in there and everything holds in nice and tight. So that's the cover assembly completed. I'm going to move on to the important part, which is the blue spring, the diaphragm, and whatnot. So basically, the way this is going to go in is this is kind of how it is assembled here. So this is three pieces. you got a brass piece, you got your blue spring, your brass and your little retaining cup here. So the first thing you want to do is install this little cup back into here like that. It'll just kind of go in there hand tight. Just kind of push that in. Next thing is this little brass piece here and it's got a little o-ring on it already out of the kit. That's going to go in here like that. Then your uh, famous blue spring, which will increase your fuel pressure from around 40 to around 60. And that's gonna go in there, just like that. Just kinda let it set. Blue spring. Now, got this little uh, tiny air valve piece here with an O-ring already assembled on it. This is the piece that broke earlier. This is going to just press in to this top area here where the old one came out. And I have big fat fingers, so don't want to pinch anything there. I'm not really being forceful with this because it is plastic. And that just kind of pops in there like that. The O-ring on it. go making sure it's straight and it is so now we have the little air valve thing with the o-ring installed on it the new plunger and the blue spring that'll take care of that I'm just basically checking to make sure everything's straight it is now we want to install the cover right here so this is a little bit of a tricky part you got a retaining area here see that circle inside of a circle that's where your blue spring is going to reside so make sure your blue spring is in there first and then apply even pressure onto it to get it onto that regulator so I'm just going to kind of push my radiator hose down a little bit I'm watching the spring make sure I'm on there which I am you can kind of feel it and then it's just a matter of carefully applying even pressure to this to get it to depress the spring and line up. Bingo. I'm gonna get a screw started and get some tension on it. This is gonna, you're, I'm holding pressure on this. Quite a bit of pressure. If it wants to push back at you getting a screw threaded in here to retain it so I can get the other one set without having to worry about the spring coming out. Sorry for my huge hands in the way. Okay. That should hold it. I'm going to lightly let off. That's good. I'm going to go get the uh, new screws here and get these started get this bottom one in you always want to be careful when you're working with aluminum because aluminum has a tendency to be very weak when it comes to threads and then you can cross thread stuff so I always like to do stuff by hand screw power tools they save time in the beginning but one wrong move you got a problem 
That's good. You can feel the spring tension there. The next one in. that I'm gonna get the rest of these in there and then I'll take you on the next step Just working on these bolts and what I'm feeling for is just good tension on it good pressure good tightening there. Don't want to over tighten these. That's good there. Good there. That's good there. Bingo. Nice and snug is what we want. So now, got our old fuel line here, the old O-ring on it. I want to pull that off because we put a new one on the receiver already. Put that over there. We'll just test the O-ring, make sure it's going to snug up nice, which it is. We're going to go ahead and tighten up our fuel line. our big ass wrench here. And you're not trying to tighten the damn world here. You're just looking to get good tension on it like that. You don't want to crush your uh, O-rings. You're just dealing with rubber. So that all looks good. I'm just double checking my work. Everything looks good in there. Everything looks good up here in the fuel filter area. Let's go ahead and get that fuel filter back in. And this is like on a little gear. I don't want to line up on that gear. There we go. Just kind of pops down. Spring loaded action there. Got back on. All right. My big ass wrench and tighten that down. Okay, got it. It's a damn 15 16 I had misplaced mine. Just try to find a longer wrench next time. Wants to hit everything in the engine bay. Go, good to go, good to go. Okay, now um, just gotta put it all back together. So let's uh, let's get that going next. I can free up tension here on my radiator hose gently. There, pull that out of there. Put our oil dipstick back in. Clean off the end again. Slide that baby down. Okay. That's in. Um, all right. I'm going to start putting these parts back together again, and then I will go ahead and show you a startup. Okay. Just finished up putting the turbo pipe back on, the air filter and housing. Uh, didn't videotape it because it's just the reverse of what I did to put it back on except this time I actually tightened my air filter on there It was just loose before So there's our parts No, it has not been started yet. I promise. So let's see uh, let's See what we get here. Let's uh, let's hope we fixed it <laughs> Cycle the fuel pump a few times
Okay. Well, it started. Good sign. Leaks that I can see. Turn the AC off. Nothing leaking there either. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a wrap. Pretty straightforward process. Pretty proud of myself. Not too hard, especially after working on that thing. Um, would I recommend you tackling it yourself? Sure. If you have big wrenches, if you have some time, if you got 40 bucks in parts, and if you want to learn a little something, definitely. Uh, it's not hard. It's a straightforward process. You saw how easy it is. Just take your time, pay attention, don't over tighten. Don't act like a hot shot and try to do it in 10 minutes and you'll be good to go. Again, I apologize for this video being long winded. My videos tend to do that. So fast forward if you don't like it, but hopefully this helps someone else. And thanks again to Diesel Tech Ron for pointing me in a direction and encouraging me to do this on my own. Thanks guys, see ya.